Hello and welcome to Infinity. I've got some more macros for you and this time for the zone system and uh, hopefully these will be really useful because they make zone selection so much easier. Follow the link down below, look for the zone system and it'll be there. And to implement them you go to the library through Views Studio and then you click on here, Import Macros and it'll look something like this, Dave's Zone System. Double click on that and here they are. To explain them very briefly, and then I'm going to do examples on here, we're going to take a gradient here from uh, which goes from black to white and underneath it there is a, a magenta rectangle. So as we knock out parts of this you'll see the magenta but you'll see the colours here otherwise. So that if I go to select zone here, it's created here, it's duplicated this layer and put a uh, control next to it. So I can actually take off the original layer so you can see what's happening here. And then we've got this one here and if we just pull this up we can see all of these and I'll explain what they do. First of all is the number of zones. You can change the number of zones if you're using the Ansel Adams system. Then it's on 11, which it starts off with. Then the zone number. You can use these click up and click down things here. Oops, going the wrong way. Um, and starts from not. The easiest way to do it, if you've got a mouse, is to hover over that and roll it. And you can see here, this is just moving across the screen. So whenever I say zone 6, there's zone 6, zone 7, zone 8, and so on. And if I go out here, if I reduce the number of zones here, so I want to say, say five zones, then go from naught, one, two, three, four. See, it's so easy to just change them to whatever you want and to play with the zones. What you can also do, because this is a fairly hard edge to this, you can feather it. And so I will slide this up here and there you go, see it just softened the edge. So which means that when you've selected this, you can and you can blend in with the remaining photograph quite easily so you can set whatever feathering you want not only that there's two types of feathering available so if you look at the bottom here if it's naught it's linear which is just a straight fall off and if i go from the naught to one now i've got a much it's a smooth one but it's a uh, an s shape and i'll show you this here so normally this is going from transparent to solid and from black to white. So normally it's that gradient there it would be, you won't see it, so you see the magenta layer and then it goes up here. So this bit here is solid. To make that feather, effectively we're doing this. We're just really pulling off the sides. And then if I want to use S shape, I want it to be like this. So this is like an S shape, like this. And if you're curious how I calculated that, then I, if you take a sine wave, it looks like this. It also goes, if you go negative, it goes that way as well. But also you can do, um, that's an equation of a boy called sine x. You can do in blue, you can do a cosine, which is just the same thing, but shifted a bit. And this goes from naught, it goes down like this. And I use that. I use that as being the shape that I put on to the um, this now that's a bit little bit of a sine wave or a cosine wave so it's fairly straightforward there are other ways of calculating i just thought i'd do it that way anyway that's enough for that this one here the luminosity that where you will only see that difference that when you're in color this is gray so it, it makes no difference but basically the standard way of doing luminosity is to is 361, which is 30% red weighted, 60% or 59% green weighted, and then 10, 11% of blue weighted. Give lots of precedence to green. And that's when converting to black and white, which you effectively need in order to do a luminosity assessment. Um, and the alternative is, is to average, basically weight them all equally, which is that. Bottom line, you try it. Not one, see if it makes a difference. So, Let's have a look at this on a real picture. Here we go. And I just click on select zone. 
and see it's really quick. Though I have got a fast PC, yours might be a little bit slower, shouldn't be too fast though, it shouldn't be too bad. Then double click on this, which brings up this. I can slide this up here to make sure I can see it. So if I've got 11 zones, I'll leave it at that. And then what I'm going to do here is, normally this, this is above the background, it's taken a copy of the background and done the uh, arrangement on it. So if I turn the bottom one off, you can see where this is. You can already see the bit there. This is zone zero. And as I turn, roll through these, you know, zone three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and so on. So you literally, through the picture, you're just scrolling through the zones. You can see what's in each zone really, really easily. So if I say, I'm going to go to, say this one here, zone five, because that's getting a lot of that tree. And say so I'm going to just use that. And then I can just leave that. If I turn on the bottom layer now, now if I take the top one here, which just got the tree and a few other bits there, I could say, go click on the normal here and go down to multiply. And you can see here, if I turn the bottom one off here, so I've got this on here, but there's some areas here that I, I don't want. It's a bit strong, I just turn it down. And I just turn up that to where I want it to. If there's things come in which I don't want, like the sky here, for example, I could put a mask on. Where is it? That one. Mask, there we go. And Control I to invert the mask. Now I can paint back the ones I want. So go to a paintbrush and in white to paint it back. I can paint like over the tree. So if I zoom into that tree, then paint over that. And we're going to make that visible. Um, if I turn up the opacity, there we go. You can see that coming back. So I take this one off and there it is. And it's just made that a bit darker. This one off turn that back in again. See you got this here is a bit pixelated. That's because I had this that feathering. If I turn up the feathering now, see the way that's just going to soften it. And there you go, you can't see it. And that's one of the reasons you use feathering there. I can also change the feathering here from one mode to another mode. So there's a difference. So choose the one you like. And I can also change the how the luminosity is calculated. Again, there's a slight difference, so choose the one which works best for you. So there you go, control zero to go back out again. That's one thing that you can do with it. And I'm going to turn that off. And I'm also going to say this one here, select zone range. So if I click on that one, now I've got it's kind of predictable. Double click on this now, turn off the bottom layer so I can just see this. Now it's exactly the same as the previous one, but it's got zone from and zone two. So this is from say zone three to zone five. Yeah, and then I can change those. So it's selecting a number of zones together. So I can pick the one if I want the tree, then I could take that one there. Maybe I, would, I want to go look at this one here and see if I wanted to pick the area, the, the reflection here. That zones two to five. That looks pretty good. So I can keep that. Now what about these other things down here? Well, if I say convert to mask and spare channel, what's going to happen is it's is going to take those, it's removed that, it's put a mask at the bottom here. Alt click on that, you can see the mask. And I put the same thing as a spare channel down here. However, this mask here is, it doesn't go all the way from black to white. It, it's, there's a bit of gray in it. If I go to history then and I go back up here to where I put the convert mask and spare channel, go back above that to the procedural texture. So I'm up here again. And now if I say mono stretch, this is going to create a layer now with it that stretch. So you go all the way from white to black again. So, and then if I click on convert to mask, I can do that there. I can also do convert to selection and it will convert, get produce the um, dotted lines for the selection. Or I can even edit this directly. So I can, because this is just an ordinary thing, I can take on the erase brush tool and I'll make this a bit bigger. And I'll just be very quick about this. Suppose I just delete everything here that's not in the 
reflection itself there. Turn on the bottom layer and I can do things like I can blend it in, you know, etc. to change that reflection. Or I can click on these things here, say convert to selection mask and spare channel. If I click on that, it puts the zone at the bottom. It puts the spare channel in down there. It also selected this so that if I go here and click on adjustments and say curves, that's going to pick this up mask up straight away. So I can hit control D to get rid of this. And now I can just change that area myself. So you can see it's really, really powerful. And I could have gone on for, I've already taken 10 minutes, normally half that, but I thought it was worth a little bit of time showing this. There is actually one more. Let's just show you one more just to show you what you can do. Oops, hang on a moment. Actually just go back there from history, which is if I click on this one, this one takes a long time. So I'm going to skip forward to the end. Okay, there it is. And the reason it skips forward is 75 steps. And this, if you really want to, this gives you the separate zones here. So if I can alt click on them, I can see the zones coming through here. Anyway, if you like to do it that way, there is a group with the whole thing in. And you can take the bottom pair and they all add up, combine together, and you can just play with them and do various things. That's it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching.